Hello, welcome to Roy's Book Reviews. Today I would like to share my thoughts with you on the novel Sherlock Holmes and the Telegram from Hell. Not by Arthur Conan Doyle, but by Nicholas Meyer. I feel as if a book like this one, where an author is taking on characters that are not of his own invention and is mimicking the style of the source material creator rather than using his own voice, should be judged on a different scale than the typical novel. And so I tried to do that. It has been quite a few years since I last read a Sherlock Holmes book by Arthur Conan Doyle. Back in the day, I read and enjoyed a number of them. I've also enjoyed various screen adaptations that feature Doyle's brilliant detective and his loyal sidekick, Dr. Watson. One of my favorite board games of all time is named 221B Baker Street, which of course is Sherlock Holmes's home address. The game comes with multiple cases for players to race to be the first to solve. After going through all of the cases and still thirsting for more, I ended up writing new ones so that my friends could continue to play the game. As the case creator, I could not be a participant. But watching my friends try to solve a mystery that I came up with was just as much fun as actively playing, maybe more. This was some of my earliest fiction writing. And like Nicholas Meyer, rather than writing in my own voice, I was doing my best imitation of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, working within the world he created while also expanding it with my own imagination playing with the wonderful characters of his invention while throwing in some new ones that I concocted. I recommend to all aspiring authors that they write a few short stories in the style of a writer they admire, particularly when those writers created characters who appear in multiple books, so there is plenty of material to study and emulate. Before finding your own voice, it isn't a bad idea to try on someone else's. Excelling at writing requires practice. If you're having trouble coming up with an original story, temporarily blocked from releasing your genius, you can always borrow from someone else who laid out a blueprint. What you can't necessarily do is publish those efforts, unless your source material is now in the public domain. After reading Sherlock Holmes and the Telegram from Hell by Nicholas Meyer, I googled to see who else has written Sherlock Holmes stories. I was not expecting to see familiar names, so I was surprised to find notable authors such as Neil Gaiman, Michael Chabon, and Stephen King on the list. Gaiman, Michael Chabon, and Stephen King happen to be authors that I have read books of and reviewed here at Roy's Book Reviews. So after checking out this one, um, feel free to peruse uh, the listing of videos that I have here and check out um, some of those. Taking up where Arthur Conan Doyle left off is apparently a popular activity, even if not done to stretch out the usage of your favorite board game. And Nicholas Meyer is one such author who is up to the challenge. This particular book of his, he's written several Sherlock entries, differs from the original Sherlock Holmes stories in that it leaves the criminal underworld of London behind for the world of American politics during wartime. Rather than attempting to solve a crime, with the exception of a quickie murder mystery early on when they are on their way to the States via sea voyage, Holmes and Watson are trying to prevent Germany from being victorious in World War I or as I like to call it, the war that definitely did not end all wars. During the time period this tale takes place in, 1916 to 1918, each chapter is conveniently dated. Holmes and Watson are getting up there in years. Most of their detecting and sidekick adventures are behind them. Much of the world is engaged in battle, excluding the United States of America that is refraining from intervention. The case given to the world's greatest detective and the doctor who made him a celebrity by chronicling their escapades is to get their hands on a telegram, 
which causes them to leave Washington, D.C. behind for Mexico and then decipher it in order to foil Germany. In so doing, President Woodrow Wilson may finally be convinced to throw the USA's military might into affecting the outcome of World War I rather than remaining a bystander. Stakes don't get much bigger than the fate of the world order. It was interesting to see Holmes and Watson out of their usual element. But since, to me, the setting of Sherlock Holmes stories is part of their charm, a big part, I would have preferred a case where he matches wits with Professor Moriarty and proves himself to be more clever than officers of the law in Scotland Yard. Nicholas Meyer does a masterful job of writing a story that feels in tone very much like the Sherlock Holmes books I remember. But the telegram from hell resides in a vastly different physical territory than classics such as A Study in Scarlet and The Hounds of the Baskervilles. Other readers may appreciate this aspect more than I did, or maybe less. The setting put me in mind of non-Sherlock Holmes books, such as Killers of the Flower Moon, mostly because of brief appearance on the pages by J. Edgar Hoover, and also The Plot Against America, which is about America's reluctance to enter World War II. My complaints of insufficient nostalgia aside, Nicholas Meyer nevertheless wrote an admirable book that was an infectious read. Since I turned through the pages rather quickly by my standards, I think I will give another Sherlock Holmes story via Nicholas Meyer a go. While this one was less of a mystery than it was a spy thriller, perhaps the next one will have a more traditional feel to it. I enjoy spy novels as well, uh, but Sherlock Holmes is not my top go-to character for that genre. Still, I would not hesitate to recommend the work of Nicholas Meyer to readers who have already gone through all of the original works and want more of the wonderful literary landscape that Arthur Conan Doyle brilliantly created and left behind for other creatives to play with as they see fit. So that's what I had to say. Until next time, this is Roy of Roy's Book Reviews saying happy reading.